Well, this is my composting pile, my vermicomposter, and the question is, what can I compost there? So basically, this is my organic waste bin. I have food scraps, I have plants cuttings, I have coffee, ground coffee, I have tea leaves, and also as you can see I have newspaper. These are the main things that I can compost, but that's not all of it. So in this video I'm gonna share with you what can be composted and also gonna share with you how to compost things in the right way so you don't have problems with smell. In case you didn't see my previous video, go watch it as well, because in that video I gave you different alternatives, like alternatives in terms of how you can compost. I talked about curbside collection, I talked about cer certain services like compost mobiles that pick up your organic waste, I also talked about backyard composting, about patio composting, the one I do, and also about indoor composting, which is super rare and lots of people don't know about that. I guess the most important question is what exactly can be composted? Almost all the food scraps can be composted, especially if it's something that's like vegetable or fruit, it can be composted. There is a certain exception, I will talk about it below. Other food scraps, like, like ground coffee, it can be composted too. Tea, let's say you drink a lot of tea, like me. All these tea leaves can be composted too. Things like eggshells can be composted as well. Most cooked foods can be composted too, again, with certain exceptions. You can also compost like leaves, grass cuttings, like all the backyard waste, can, all the yard waste can be composted too. Newspapers, they can be composted. Again, there will be exception. I will talk about it in the rules. Almost any paper, like printer paper, cardboard, cardboard boxes, any paper used to write something. Like if you have a, if you write a journal and decide to get rid of it, take the papers and you can compose them as well. Other things that made from paper that can be composted too, it's like napkins, paper towels, coffee filters, or paper takeout boxes, also the egg cartons, obviously the paper one. So lots of things can be composted and most of these things I successfully compost in my vermi composter here on this tiny patio. So you can see there are worms there, there is soil which used to be food scraps, also you have some things that are not processed yet like eggshells. Interesting fact, if you drink tea from the tea bags you can compost them as well. Seriously, totally, the whole thing you can put there. Yeah, they have a little metal thing sometimes, which might not be good. You can maybe technically remove it or just put it there and remove it in the end. And also, interestingly, natural fib fibers like cotton or linen can be composted too. Obviously, if you're doing patio composting, I would not throw my cotton t-shirt there. It's probably gonna take a while. But in general, those things can be composted too. And if you watched my last video, you know that everything that's get composted becomes a soil and creating new soil. I think it's so beautiful. Just creating soil from an old t-shirt. That's magic. This is actually decompostable dryer sheets. Check it out. This is an egg cardboard. This is newspaper. Things you have to watch out and things are not really compostable or they can be technically compostable but they can cause trouble. For example, if we are talking about vermicomposter, you don't want to put too much greasy things there or like let's say dump cooking oil there. Also worms don't really like citrus peels. Sometimes I put citrus peels there but because we eat a lot of citruses in our household, sometimes I have to dump it somewhere else. Other things, for example meat and dairy, you don't want to put there because it might create certain attraction for rodents, raccoons, flies and whatnot. Let's say if you had somebody pick up your organic waste and this thing would go to uh, industrial composting, those things would be fi fun, fine there. But for example, for the warm composter, it's not really good because decomposition of those things is a little bit longer or more complicated. And also rats are not the most pleasant neighbors in your composting pile. Another thing they suggest not to put in the composting is cooked or raw rice because the rice attracts rodents really fast. And also it can uh, create certain bacteria in your pile 
pile that, that you don't want for your beautiful compost pile. What else you don't want to put there? For some reason they say don't put walnuts there because it kind of messes up with the process. Also if you put some plant of grass cutting make sure they are not the diseased grass cutting. Let's say it's not something that has fungus or some mildew or something because you don't want this thing to spread and grow from your backyard composter. Also they say don't put shellfish in the composter because I guess it takes too long to decompose and again it can attract something that you don't want to attract and also it might smell. Another thing, the dog poop and cat poop should not go into the composter. It can spread some disease this way. Interestingly enough, if you have any vegetarian animal, so let's say you have cows, in case you have cows in your backyard, <laughs> or goats, their poop can go into composting. So the vegetarian poop can go into composting, but non-vegetarian poop, which is which comes from cats and dogs, even if you think your dog is vegetarian, I would not do this probably, and I would not keep the dog vegetarian as well. Okay, that's another topic. In terms of paper, you actually need to put paper in your composter, doesn't matter if it's vermicomposter or a composting pile in your backyard, because it helps to keep the moisture at a certain level, but not all the paper is made equal. For example, if you take a paper cup and it's made completely out of paper, you can put it there and I did it. It takes a while to decompose, but actually works fine. But of course, if it's a paper cup that is coated with plastic and lots of single-use paper plates or cups, they are actually coated with plastic. I did an experiment once, I put this kind of cup in there, so the paper side decomposed, but then I had to manually remove the plasticky film that was just sitting there and probably was excreting toxins on my worms. You know what's interesting about this plastic film? It probably came from something that was looking like paper, but it was plastic coated. Also if they say if the paper is glossy, let's say it's a glossy magazine or a glossy newspaper, sometimes it's not so good for the worms. I still do put a little bit, but I make sure it's not the whole magazine I put there, although I don't read magazines. Also they said if the paper is too greasy, it might be also not the best thing. Again, I think you can do everything if it's in small proportions, but let's say if you have the whole, I don't know, bag of greasy paper, it might mess up with your composting pile. One important thing about the composting that I have to talk about is about those items that are labeled compostable. So let's say it's a packaging or something else that says compostable or biodegradable and so on and so forth. Not all of these things can go into your compost. Actually, if you talk about backyard composting or vermicomposter, most of these things can't go there at all. They're not gonna break down or it's gonna take them forever. Like If your organic waste gets picked up and brought to some industrial composting, those guys can take those biodegradable items, but again you have to check the rules. It is quite important to understand that if the packaging says biodegradable or compostable, unless it's certified, it doesn't mean anything. There are lots of items that might say biodegradable, but they're not going to be accepted by industrial composting facilities. To make sure they are accepted, check the rules of your composting company, of your organic waste collector, and also look for certification. If it's not certified, it's probably not going to be compostable. As far as I know, for example, here in America, composters will only accept items that are marked by BPI certified compostable. So if you use certain organic bags that are having this label, those things can be compostable. So if it's marked certain way, it can be compostable, but not in your backyard. I do experience experiments all the time and once in a while I put things like coffee cups that says like compostables and they actually do break down but it takes forever. Also I, I, I did some I think plastic cutlery that said buy a compostable made from some corn something. This thing is still there for almost a year. I don't know I'm not sure it's broke down so I guess one day I'll figure out if this plastic compostable cutlery is there or not. But technically you don't want to put any compostable plastic looking things into your backyard or parts of composting because they're not going to decompose there and they're not meant to be decomposed there. They're meant to be sent to industrial facilities. Okay. okay guys, I guess that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you know what to do. Please give me a thumbs up, share my videos with your friends and let's make sure more people understand the composting process and more people are crazy like us and do composting because it's a cool thing and it's easy thing to do and it has so much positive benefit for the environment. So what I have here, garbage, egg boxes, newspapers and my layers of vermicomposter that I'm gonna go into there. I'm gonna just stack them there.
So this is how American composter looks with the layers that are mostly processed. So you can see there are worms there. There is soil, which used to be food scraps. So if you ask me if composting in the patio is doable, yes, it's doable, but it does require some discipline. Also, it requires some patience and also it requires some motivation to do it on a regular basis and to have some free time and to do it. So.